Hey guys, it's Morgan. Welcome back to the Weekly Schlug. This is our weekly show. Uh, we call it the Shop Vlog or Schlug here at Highland Cycles in Western Colorado, uh, where me and Angry Zach and Leandra work at keeping bikes running, keeping things going, and we show you all the things that we do to do that. Um, trying to teach you guys uh, how to take care of your own bikes, do product reviews, um, tool spotlights, all that good stuff. If that sounds cool, if you just got here, you found us because you were watching our 300XC videos or anything like that, make sure you stick around, give us a shot, join us for a week at the shop. Here we go. All right, guys, first on the lift is my 2018 300XCW. Um, normally, the Schlag doesn't involve too much of my own stuff. I'd leave that for other videos, but uh, this one I'm doing because I'm waiting on parts on the blown up 300 over there. It wasn't really blown up, but the one that has the scratch and cylinder, blah, blah, blah. We're waiting for that to get back now. Um, and I just got done shooting the video of the X-Ting, it was X-T-N-G, um, carburetor that they sent me to test on this. It's a metering rod carburetor with a pilot circuit. And um, I'll give you the short version here. If you don't want to watch the whole thing, I don't like it. Thumbs down. Uh, if you want to watch why and what I found, uh, make sure you check that video out. It's super easy to find here on the channel. So um, I'm going to take that back off. Uh, we'll take a good look at it. I'll show you guys ins and outs of it because I don't think I actually disassembled it on the, the install video, but I'll show you guys that. Uh, then we're going to reinstall the key in because man, honestly, I have yet to use any carburetor that works as well as a key in PWK. Uh, 38, 36, they're both good. 36 more low end, 38 more top end. Um, both of them are just brilliant. And yeah, it was worth the shot. Uh, because I have two bikes, and that's awesome. I'm very privileged that way to have two motors. I got this one and the 23XC, so I'm very happy to be able to test something and not worry about whether or not I had a bike to ride. Um, but it wasn't good. I didn't enjoy it. So anyway, let's get the seat and tank and the exhaust and everything off of this thing and pull that carburetor and take a look. All right, guys, got the carb off. Um, I already kind of did some tests and did, because one of the problems I was having, if you don't watch the other video, one of the problems I was having is it would load up. I get any kind of rough stuff, it would just load up and get super rich, and then it would get super lean um, everywhere else and like ting. And it would run like if you got on smooth stuff and you ran it, just pinned it, um, it was good and it made a lot of power like that. It actually, you know, it really moved um, but it didn't it was not consistent enough for me I'm not gonna deal with it right and I I did every option of fiddling with it I tried um, the settings that came on it like it came in the box with and I tried the settings that the guys at Xting gave me I just could not get it to do it and I think the problem is when it gets full like I mean, this is not going to, I don't know. When it bounces, you get gas goes into it. It doesn't have an overflow um, for it to dump out like a normal carburetor. Let me grab one. All right, so here's my can that I like very much. The only reason I tried this was to help you guys out, try to either tell you something that was really cool or save you some money. It looks like in this case we're saving money. But so in a normal carburetor, you have this tube. And this tube sits up in here at about just below the level of the Venturi, right? And <clears throat> when you splash, it dumps gas out this hole. Now, obviously, there's a fuel line on it that goes so it doesn't get all of your motor or whatever gets into the ground, but it does that. So that's what that's for. That's the whole point of that overflow is to keep the gas from going into the motor, whether it be you lay the bike on its side, um, you crash, it uh, doesn't, uh, sometimes obviously if you crash totally on its side, someone's gonna run into the, the motor, you're gonna flood it. But 
you know, whatever. Anyway, it helps keep gas out of the motor. This does not have that. So when you bump around, the gas comes up and raw fuel dumps in the motor, making it um, uh, real rich. And the other thing you can see that this has this real low part of the Venturi. And that could be part of the problem too. Um, Cause lowering that part of the Venturi effectively richens the, the carburetor up because it gets it closer to the float level. Anyway, whatever. So you carb guys know what I'm talking about. So that may be too low. Um, I just don't know. And, and I checked all my fittings. Everything was tight. Like I checked the, I was like, ah, maybe it's just lean. Maybe I have the whole thing too lean and whatever. Um, so I made sure that the boots were tight. They were tight. There's no dirt on the inside of here. It's perfect. That wasn't the issue. I honestly, I just think that a carburetor to work well in really gnarly situations needs to have that overflow. And that's why on these, you take this, the tube that comes off of here and you loop it up over and it gives it just a little bit more time. Like it will, it's still going to spell out, but it gives a little more time to come up and then go back in, but it keeps it out of the motor. Um, so again, I'm sorry to the X team guy. He's pretty upset with me, uh, for my review. Um, he's not happy he sent me the carburetor and he's really sad, um, that I said what I said, but I, I, I'm honest. I gotta, I gotta stay honest. So, um, let's take this the rest of the way apart and see what all's going on inside here. That's the other thing. These, I never took these loose, these, uh, screws, um, on install and the gasket leaked. It definitely was a wet spot around it as I was riding. It was like, you could see the, the, the dirt building up around it. Um, like I said, it wasn't, I never, I did mess, I did check the float level, but because it's clear, you can check it from the outside, which is kind of nice. Um, but I never had this off. I mean, it all looks legit, but I mean, they make all this stuff. It's got their name on the float, name on everything. And I thought about maybe, you know, raising this or actually lowering the float level, raising the, the tank, anyway, having the fuel shut off earlier. <coughs> but the, the way it was running so lean, I don't want any part of that, I don't think. I don't think I want that to happen. Everything looks good. I, everything seems normal, guys. I just think there's something with the design that's just not, I don't know, it's interesting. I don't know what these two things are. Uh, they seem to have like little Oh, that's the internal venting. There's little check valves. So that's the internal vent. Maybe that's not working. Maybe the check valves don't work very well. I don't know. The deal is I'm not willing to fiddle with it any longer. Like when you buy a $400 carburetor, which is how much these cost, um, you should be able to just bolt it on, especially with all these external adjustments. You should be able to bolt it on and then a few turns of different things and you should be good to go. Like you shouldn't have to take things apart and fiddle with things. I like carburetors with normal vents and I know the smart carb has internal venting and whatever. And that's, I guess all well and good. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just seems, uh, I don't know guys. I'm not into it. I'm not going to mess with it any longer. Sorry again guy at Xting. I don't know what your name is. I really am sorry that I don't like it. I wanted to like it. I rode it twice. I don't really, if I'm struggling with something, man, it rarely gets a second ride. <laughs> um, but I figured I'd give it a shot. You were nice enough to give it to me. I appreciate that. But I just, not a fan. So I'm just, I'm just checking things out. Like I said, looks well made. My official recommendation is to stay away from Xting carbs and just buy yourself a good key in. I, they work really, really well. Oh, I gotta clean some things up. I gotta put a new throttle cable on this thing. I made a cable, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. I'm very lucky to get to do this for a living. So um, anyway, I'm gonna do all that, get this all back together, get this bike running really good. Maybe I'll take you guys for a quick test ride. All right, guys, got the car back on. No throttle. Chris, let's go take it for a spin.
Guys, we're having to get it kind of cleaned out. I think the thing was still loaded up from that other carburetor. Feels pretty good now, though. Guys, you hear that thing? Drops right back down to idle, just like I like it. Uh, I probably lost a little over rev on the road. Um, so I probably lost a little over rev on the road. Uh, that 38, and with the power jet and all that thing that I did have, I think it did probably maybe pull a little bit longer on top. Uh, but it's so much more predictable down low, so much cleaner and crisper. Um, yeah. Key in PWK carburetors, guys. If you're gonna buy a carburetor, if you're gonna go buy an aftermarket carburetor, buy a PWK uh, key in either 36 or 38, depending on what you want to do. Um, for me, in the hard stuff, I like the 36, more low end. Um, yeah, it's just proven. It works good. It's easy to jet. And like I said before, I don't change my jetting from 4,000 to 12,000 feet. I don't change jets. So, yeah. I'm sticking with a normal carb. All right, guys, so I'm pulling the X-Ting back out. Uh, I said I was done with it. Uh, I was tired of fiddling with it, but I got into a very long conversation with the maker, owner, inventor, uh, innovator, let's call it, of this carburetor, and um, we may have found something that is wrong with this carb that is causing the problem. So I'm really excited because I really want this thing to work. Um, I wouldn't have put it on the bike and ridden it twice and struggled with it if I didn't want it to work. So let's dig in. I think we found something. So uh, the owner, or at least the guy I'm dealing with, I, I guess I don't really know who he is, but he's the guy at X-Team that sent me the carburetor. I'm pretty sure it's his product because he is very invested in it and was uh, messaging me at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, I was asleep, but uh, he um, did a whole day of testing and was able to actually replicate my issues. So um, I'm really hopeful that we found something and we can get this back on the bike and try it again. Because again, I am not uh, one to just poo poo something. Um, but you know, I struggled with it, so I was done anyway. So we were discussing that the choke may not be sealing, which would make sense. Um, I mean, it'd be weird for a brand new carburetor to have a choke that doesn't work, but it would make sense that that would cause some of the craziness that I was dealing with. We think, uh, like I said, the guy from Exting and I think that hopefully it was the choke. So this is the tube for the choke circuit. He said he got a carburetor to do some issues and it did look like it closed, but that this is leaking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow on it. I can suck through it. It's not completely sealed. Try what he suggested, which is to just solder this thing closed uh, and, you know, start it, you know, be able, because you know, it starts just fine uh, without this um, choke. I mean, it's a little bit, uh, cold blooded, but it's no big deal to start it and get it going. So, um, let's give that a shot. I, I'll check back in here in a bit. All right, guys, got the carburetor back on. The tube that feeds the choke circuit is completely sealed off with solder. Um, everything's hooked back up, tightened um, down all the air boots. Again, I checked all that stuff the first time around, it was all good. The float level is right in there. It's a little high over here, but that's because the carburetor is tipped. So that's normal. Uh, all the electrons I've ever seen are kind of like that too. So now everything's set. 
Um, let me put all the rest of the thing back together. We'll fire it up. All right, guys, so now choke doesn't work. It's still actually relatively cool <laughs> in the shop today. Um, but one thing the owner said is that if uh, you had a problem with it uh, starting cold with the choke circuit blocked off, you could just open up this fuel circuit, the pilot circuit basically a little bit, right, and then turn it back down. I don't really want to have to do that. So, um, I mean, I will, if it makes this thing work, I will 100%. But um, I'm going to try it without that. Uh, the other thing is we have now richened up the needle because originally he thought it was a lean condition because of the metering rod. Anyway, so whatever. Um, oh, also I closed off the air circuit. So there's a, a long and a short screw. I think I showed you that in the original video of this thing. Um, I put it back to, I closed that off. It's an air assist circuit. So they still have a pilot circuit, but it's the air assist is now closed off. So um, yeah, let's see what happens here. All right, I'm actually happy with that. I mean, it's not idling great right now, but that's just it's seriously cold overnight. So I'm gonna put all the bolts back into this thing and let's take it out and ride it and see how it does. All right, guys, try this thing out. I'm gonna let it warm up a bunch. And then uh, we'll go up and down the road. We'll go through the racks over there. And then I got a hill down the road. I can, hopefully it's steep enough. I can um, replicate the steepness. See if we got this thing solved. sure we get it nice and hot so far big one here. I'd get on the brakes before I would slosh gas. So that wasn't the verbal, it was a little slow to take off, but I think that might be the pilot circuit being a little lean. This is not hanging up though. Let's go another quarter. Let's go down to my hill. Yeah, this is pretty steep. 
deep. Alright, that was good. Alright, this is a steep, steep downhill. That is... That's for real steep, guys. And it didn't die. proud of x -Ting for reaching out, being convicted, and believing that this thing's going to work, and working really hard to find out what our problem was. I think we found it. I think that that choke circuit was leaking gas. Um, and like while I couldn't like blow through it or suck through it really hard, uh, you know, fluid would get by there way better, and also bouncing it might, anyway. So I think that's good. And hopefully what this does is inspires them to reach out to their manufacturer and really work hard at figuring that out so that uh, uh, the, in the future you can still use the choke. So I am so far so good. I, I'm really happy with the change. Again, um, this doesn't give it a thumbs up yet because I want to get it out in the real world and actually ride it. Um, but the bike feels good. It feels snappy, responsive, pulls hard on top as hard as it ever did this 300 never pulled that hard on top like my oh my new one but um pulls good on top and and now it stopped hanging up so yeah guys i'm, I'm excited let's get on to the next job all right guys okay, so next job is actually uh messing with these moose balls that you guys saw uh in the last video i am really excited because actually i got word from uh professional racer mason ottersburg uh, that he has been running these and he's getting like 60 hours out of us. That's crazy. That's a ton of riding, um, especially at his pace. Like that means I should be able to get a lot more than that. <laughs> but um, let's take a little, um, I'm actually going to film an in-depth video, uh, but I will bring you guys in on the schlog here for uh, little bits and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change over here, shoot the in-depth video. Like I said, we'll show you as we go. They are. They're like tiny little mooses. They even say Mr. Wolf, uh, and they have uh, an arrow. They're definitely shaped. You can see that. You, they are shaped as a certain way to go in. All right, guys, got the moose balls installed, and honestly, it kind of looks cool. So um, <laughs> it's pretty sweet. All right, next on the lift is the 300, but we are uh, getting it ready to go ride in the snow even more. If you haven't watched the video where I talk about the studded, video, uh, studded tires, make sure you do. Um, but this part of the slog, we're gonna talk about what it takes to get a bike ready to go ride in the snow in Colorado. Uh, there's a lot of you guys out there uh, don't have the money for a snow bike or a snowmobile. Um, you're like me, I, don't, I can't afford that kind of stuff. So I have to make my dirt bike work. Also here in Montrose, we don't get that much snow down to anyway, whatever. It makes sense to be able to ride the thing in the snow. Uh, first thing you need to do is some sort of traction situation because we do get enough snow and ice that it's pretty slippery out there on bare tires. Uh, if we get a really dry winter, it's no big deal. Just like right, you just ride in the dirt, it's no problem. But um, normally we get a fair amount of snow. Also, as you go up, if you wanna go up into the forest at all, they're definitely gonna have snow. So you need some sort of studded tire. Huge thanks to uh, Keith at Lightning Studded Tires for these, I really appreciate them. I can say 100% thumbs up on these. They are brilliant. Studs don't come out, tons of traction. They don't wear, they're amazing. Uh, if you wanna hit uh, Keith up. I will put his email here. It's keith.mcqueen 
at gmail.com. Please reach out to him, get a set. 550 bucks for tires all studded, ready to go. That is a crazy deal. Um, there's 458 studs. If you buy grip studs, that's $458 because <laughs> they're a dollar stud. They're probably more than that now. That was last year or the year before uh, they were a dollar a stud. So, so that alone is basically five to $600 in studs. And then that doesn't include the tire or the labor. So these things are brilliant. Thank you, Keith. Next thing for me, at least, this is for what I need. Uh, the next thing for me is to keep my hands warm. I don't like running heated grips partially because it's extra wires and stuff all over the bike. The other thing is this bike won't run it. It doesn't have enough power out of the stator to heat those things. Uh, heated things, whether it be jackets, seats, grips, whatever, are a massive draw on power because they're just a dead short, right? They just short two wires together, creates heat, whatever. They regulate it so it doesn't burn up. But So heated grips doesn't make sense for me. Also, like I said, I don't like all the wires and extra controllers and stuff like that. Um, big heavy gloves don't work for me. I've run snowmobile gloves, ice climbing gloves, all kinds of gloves. Uh, my hands still get cold pretty much no matter what. So for me, I've got another solution. Let me show you. All right, guys. So keeping the wind off is the key in my opinion. And I am pretty excited about trying these. These are from Power Mad. They're made for snowmobiles, but um, you know, we're kind of snowmobiling, right? So let's take a look at these things. They're pretty sweet and they're not very expensive. I'll look that up and get that up here. Um, but I like that it just opens up and you strap it around. So that makes it, you can go over hand guards, even if you have full wraps. Uh, it's got some little uh, uh, elastic -y guys in here to wrap around. Another thing here, I think that's for, they're made specifically for a power mad hand guard that's like i think fits right in there but we don't need that um so let's see although i mean if i can make them the elastic work on these guards i will in fact i might just try to see don't worry guys i'll bring you over here and show you what this looks like there we go guys so Boom, hand in, it's nice and big and open. So if you fall, you can get your hands out of there. I've actually had other style that were uh, more constricting <laughs> and that didn't work so good. <laughs> Falling, I couldn't get my arm out and whatever. No big deal. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. So you've got this, there's, um, here I'll show you. These Velcro, and then you can bring this around, Velcros, and then it's got a, strap here that kind of holds all this together. I think that's going to be sweet. Yeah, heck yeah. And it's, again, it's not so much about like wrapping around your arm and insulating, although that is nice um, if you can do it, but you're not as free to get your hands out. It's all about keeping that wind off of your hands. Um, now I'll probably still be wearing, you know, warmer gloves with this, but just not having to wear huge big snowmobile gloves and like I said, even those don't work for me. So I'm gonna put this other one on real fast and we'll take a look and see what it looks like. <laughs> All right guys, so I'm super excited about those mitts. Check them out. Let's see them, they look good, all big and goofy, um, but that's gonna be awesome. So uh, next thing I'm gonna do today is I want to put my plastic skid plate back on. Um, Huge thanks to Enduro Engineering for this skid plate. I'm definitely not getting rid of it. I'm going to keep it and use it for more like extreme Enduro stuff because it's definitely more protective than the plastic one, but it is definitely heavy. Uh, but more importantly, you can see when it hits rocks, it like hangs up. It likes to grab and hold. Um, so I don't love that. I mean, yes, obviously hard Enduro, it's going to be in rocks and scratching and hold it, but um, I need more protection when I know that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm really excited to keep that and thank you very much. But I want to put the plastic one back on, but I want to keep my skid for the back. I do have a protector to keep this thing safe, but I like having this plastic skid. That one's cool because that actually protects the clevis and keeps it from getting damaged. But again, it's aluminum. It hangs down. This is going to be sweet. Now KTM uh, has a part that's coming that's going to fit on here, but it doesn't exist yet. So we're going to make this one fit. 
So I'll walk you through my process of how I'm gonna do this. So see, it's too wide here, you can see. So we're gonna have to shave that down, that's no big deal. Uh, and then the holes don't line up. Again, not a problem. I think what we're gonna do is I'm going to come in here and I might just, I want as much support as possible. So I think what I'll do is I'm just gonna cut this width. I'm just gonna leave those holes there. They're gonna not be used at all, but I'm gonna just come in and cut this so this sits down here, which is a cool design that their you know skid is gonna fit down in there. Once we get that all sorted out and get this shaved down and it fits in there well, we're gonna take a center punch from the back side of this and poke holes on this, drill holes, we'll make them big, and then we'll reuse uh, these things so we can recess the bolt up in there so it doesn't get hit. So yeah, join me as we get this thing done. I think it's gonna be cool. All right, guys, I got it marked. Um, it turns out that, so you see that right there, it needs to be right at that width um, between those two points and then this is as, as deep as it needs to go. So we just need to take off this kind of chunk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break all the rules of safety and I'm going to use the side of this wheel um, for plastic and I know you get just throw a fit. Everybody throw a fit, have fun, whatever. Uh, this is the flattest thing I have that can make sure that that stay, cut stays nice and flat. Um, so yeah, anyway. Go for it. All right, guys, check it out. That fits nice, I like that. So now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna use the stock holes on the skid plate to put holes into the link skid. So hold it up like that, take our Center punch, come right in the middle. Right, found some washers are gonna work. Check those things out, pretty cool. They fit right down in there, just like they're supposed to. Now, step bit. They kind of step down in, so perfect. All right, a longer bolt, washer, nylock nut, which is nice. These are all just from the Enduro Engineering, so I'm gonna have to buy more to remount this on. I'm gonna buy another one of these for the Enduro Engineering so I can just have it all set up. But for now, this is gonna work great. Oh yeah. Right on guys, check that out. That worked out perfectly. So stoked. So mount this thing up and take a look at what it looks like on the bike. All right, there we go. Got the plastic back on and see the skid works just fine because it leaves this hole open. If I were to move this forward, like if I took this skid and moved it forward, it would cover this hole up, which is a nice way for any kind of ice, oil, gas, whatever, anything that gets done in here. Uh, hopefully none of that too much, but um, oil is a possibility if I'm gonna drain the <coughs> oil without actually taking the skid plate off. A nice drain here and then I just wash it off afterwards. So I'm gonna leave it just like that. That turned out pretty cool. Um, actually, I think it's about time to change the oil on this bike. So I'm gonna do that next. Right on guys, thank you so much for joining me for this week's schlag. I really appreciate it. If you've made it here, if you've made it all the way to the end of this really long video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, maybe consider it because um, it seems like you're enjoying it. And if you hated it, maybe uh, comment below and tell me what you hated. Punk Rock Club, I love you guys the most. Make sure you drop a rock and roll sign there in the uh, comments. I love you guys more than I love everyone else. We're really pushing hard uh, to get to 20,000 subscribers. We're really, really close now. When we do get there, we are gonna pick someone and we're gonna fly them out here to come ride with us. I'm gonna get to ride one of my bikes. Going to get to go bang around in the adobes in the desert out here. It's going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, it's going to happen in the spring, summer. <laughs> We're probably going to hit 20,000 before that, but we'll make the choice. 
and then uh, we'll, you know, set the thing up for this uh, spring or summer. So I love you guys. Get out, spread the gospel, two wheels. And as always, I desperately hope that what we're doing is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes.